Hello there, I'm Guildmaster Dan, and welcome to the fourth wall. Uh, I, I apologize if I appear a little tired. I'm just getting over the flu. Uh, but I said I would have a video for you guys this week, and I meant it. Um, so what comes to mind while I'm laying there in fever dreams? Uh, well, it can't be adventuring through plagues, because we already did that. So I think what we're going to talk about this week is should you use downtime in your games? So I suppose the first thing I should do is define what I mean by downtime. In this case, I'm talking about any any time where your PCs are not actually adventuring, you know, whether they're traveling from place to place or they're in town, or any time essentially where they would have free time uh, between the important bits. And what we're talking about today is, you know, whether or not you should use that in your game and, you know, what uses it has. You know, when you talk about using downtime in games, uh, it, it really becomes a matter of uh, discussing uh, narrativism versus simulationism. Uh, for those of you who don't know, there's a lot of... We've talked previously about uh, game mastering styles in the, in the past, you know, such as... Uh, I've mostly talked about, like, old school versus new school. Well, um, another... Another couple of schools of thought that are out there are narrativism versus simulationism. Uh, narrativist game masters are game masters who are primarily concerned with telling a good story. You know, they'll typically run on, they'll typically run adventure paths or homebrew adventures, but, you know, they're focused on uh, really telling a good story with those players being, or those players' characters being the protagonists of the story. Whereas simulationism, um, is more about, um, all right, you have this world, and you've made your characters, go. Narrativism-style game mastering typically accompanies um, adventure paths or set adventures, um, and involves less improv in general, because the GM already knows the entire story. He's just kind of guiding the players along with it. Um, and on top of that, you know, it, it often makes players feel more important because the game master, you know, he's created this grand scheme and, you know, the players are at the center of it. So generally they're going to feel like proper, proper heroes, you know, like the heroes, of this, well, unless you're running in like a horror game, uh, they're going to feel like, uh, you know, proper heroes or, you know, they're going to feel like the main characters of the story, like the world revolves around them. Um, whereas in simulationism, you know, you're usually going to see that uh, that style of game mastering accompanying a sandbox or an open world game where the players are left to their own devices you know they've made their characters they've come up with their backgrounds and they're just they they determine where they go and what they do with their lives um, that inherently involves more improv because characters or players are unpredictable you never know where they're gonna go and as a game master you have to be able to come up with stories on the fly come up with characters on the fly um, and be able to just essentially follow the players as they move through the world. Um, you either have to be really good at improv, or you have to really know the know the world that they're running in very well. Um, oftentimes, uh, players are, are in simulationist games. Players typically form a really are a really strong emotional attachment to characters and places. Uh, they just simply spend more time with the characters and um, essentially get to know them better and grow more attached to them. I've heard of simulation game, simulationist games where a group, um, well, where a group, dis, well, I don't want to say disbanded, they continued playing, but the actual adventure group disbanded and stopped adventuring because one of the characters died. And that character was just the heart of their party, and they just didn't have it in them to keep going anymore. They were that attached to the character that they actually cried when he died. Um, and that's that's just some of the attachment that you can get out of a simulationist game. Whereas, you know, the, the narrativist, you can really maybe feel like a hero, you know, like, yeah. So that's great. We got to know a little bit about two different styles of game mastering. But what does that have to do with downtime? Well, downtime you will typically find more often used in simulationist style games, uh, mainly because 
downtime can be used uh, to essentially have your players embody their characters in their everyday life. Um, now they're they're not just they're not just characters in a story, but they're people, um, and they get to experience what it's like being that person in this fantasy world or this sci-fi world or this post-apocalyptic wasteland, um, and really get to know what it's like to be that person. Um, this can build, as I mentioned before in the simulation, this can build emotional attachment to characters, as it does allow for them to get to know their characters better, um, just because they spend more time with them. And further, you know, it allows them to get to know their, you know, their group of other characters as well, it, as it allows for um, natural friendships, rivalries, and romances to form. Um, not just the, I don't want to say forced kind that you see in narrativism, but we'll say abbreviated kind that you see in narrativism. Um, in this case, you can, you can actually have, you know, your characters go out on dates or, you know, just experience the experience like a festival or something. You know, it, it's not, it's no longer, these, it's no longer um, characters going between set pieces. Instead, it's characters living their lives. And on that being said, um, downtime for all the great things that come out of it um, can be very boring um, because just like real life, you know, it, it can be boring. Um, and if you have players that aren't used to uh, running in a simulationist style game or in, in a game that uses downtime at least, you know, you can get you can get some long, boring sessions where players are just sitting on their hands because they don't know what to do. They 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 don't know, you know, they're they're too used to being taken to the next set piece, or at least having, you know, or or at least hyper summarizing what they've done in the last two weeks. Um, they they're they're not used to like okay, you get up this morning. What do you do today? Like, um, I wait for the adventure to start. And you can run into that, and that that's not really, it's not really a bad thing. It's a bad thing if you're running a simulationist game because it's going to slow down your game a lot. But um, it, it's not inherently a bad thing. It's just um, it's just a behavior that comes from people who who are used to or prefer narrativist style games. Okay. Similarly, if, if you run the opposite, if you run say a narrativist style game with people who or with players who are used to running downtime. Uh, or running in a simulation style game, um, it's typically easier for you um, as it's they can summarize just as well. They can summarize their downtime just as well as anybody else. But be prepared like, as the game master for them to constantly, or at least very often, try and go off the uh, off the adventure path as they're used to pursuing what they want. Um, and you'll have to come up with believable ways to bring them back onto the adventure path. Or, you know, you could let them, you could take a pause in your adventure and let them go and do that. I mean, uh, just because they're simulationists and narrativists doesn't mean there can't be a mixture of the two or there can't be, like, sometimes you can lean towards one way and sometimes you can lean towards the other. They're, they're not, like, two solid schools of thought, you know. They're, they're not, it, it's not like you have, it's not like partisan, it's not like you have to be partisan towards one way or the other. Um, but... It, it you'll if you run a a sim or if you run downtime with players that aren't used to downtime, you can get into some long and boring sessions because they don't know what to do. If you run uh, if you don't run downtime with characters who are used to downtime, you're going to get them constantly pulling towards doing what they want to do as opposed to doing what the story dictates them to do. Um, and Essentially, you're you're going to need more. You're going to need to be able to improv well with those people who are used to downtime, um, versus the character. I mean, you gotta you have to be able to improv no matter what. But you're gonna you're gonna find yourself required to do more of it with those characters that are used to downtime. Much as with minis, downtime is a matter of preference. Both your preference and your player's preference preferences. Hmm. Um, and actually, more so than minis. Your your players' preferences are your players' preferences with downtime are actually yeah the, it, you may like to run uh, simulationist games but if you're running with players that aren't used to it or prefer narrativist style games um, 
you're going to have a real hard time uh, running your game. Uh, essentially, um, if like you can use downtime to build character or build attachment um, in your players to characters and to setting, but only if the player is willing. Um, otherwise, you're going to get a lot of sessions of literally the player just sitting there being quiet, waiting for you to tell them what happens next. Um, and that can be frustrating for both the players and the game master. So be sure to fi to find out if your players want to give that a try, um, if uh, or you know if they would prefer to if they would prefer to just you know find plot hook pulled along. You know that I mean there's nothing wrong with running it running adventure paths or running simulation style games. It's just a matter of preference of the game master and the players. And remember, if you want to run a simulation this game and your players don't, um, you're going to have a hard time running running a simulation this game with those players. So either you need to adjust to their style or you need to find new players. Uh, again, there's nothing wrong with either way. Just that's what you're going to have to do. Um, now, if you want to give downtime a try, like maybe the whole you know, the whole embodying your character in their everyday life sounds kind of neat to you, or at least, you know, you want to have them explore that a little bit. Um, I would suggest starting small. Um, like, the next time they have to go to town, um, have them be stuck over there for a couple of days. Maybe maybe there were rains while they were traveling, and the, the river that surrounds it has flooded the road, so they can't leave right away. Or, you know... Uh, if it's a sci-fi style game, it's going to take them a couple of days to repair the ship or something. Um, so, okay, so they're stuck in town for a little bit. And, you know, that that's... Be sure that it's at a time when it's not a set piece, them being stuck there. Um, it's not part of the story that they're there. They're just delayed there because that happens in life. Um, and just see how they want to spend their free time. You know, you, you don't necessarily have to go hour to hour. Um though you can go hour to hour. There there are simulations games where players never stop role-playing. They are literally in character um, and go hour to hour. Um, but um, see what they want to do. Like, let them pursue their character's interests. You know, if if it becomes apparent that they, they're the type of players that they're going to sit on their hands and just kind of wait for you to tell them the next part of the story, um, then town might not be the best time. They might be the type of players, um, and this can be totally in role play too. This might, this could not, uh, this could also be in addition to players that aren't used to downtime. It, they very well could have characters that really only go to town for what they need and then leave to go back adventuring. In either case, it's fine. Town might not be the best uh, option for that. Instead, do, like, if that doesn't work, try it when they're, you know, traveling to the next place. Um, you know, just kind of see what they do each day to pass the time, because let's face it, um, Dungeons and Dragons, uh, or any other fantasy game, where it takes weeks of walking or riding on a horse to get from town to dungeon, um, that's a lot of downtime. That's a lot of small talk. That's a lot of uh, pursuing interests. That's a lot of surviving. Um all good role-playing things. Um, now, again, if they're not used to it, they might not readily, you know, they might not realize that, okay, well, when they're given the chance, they can, you know, uh, uh, do whatever interests them. Maybe they like playing cards or something, or, you know, they can hone skills, or, you know, they could just make small talk as they go. You know, if they don't realize that they can do those things, what you can do is introduce, like, random encounter NPCs. And I don't mean uh, bad guys for them to fight. Um, th this whole, like, rolling to see if you encounter a monster on the way is kind of dumb. Um, no. Well, have them encounter maybe just some other travelers. Like, maybe um, there's a person or a group that's going in the same direction as the party and they ask to travel with them. Then um, each day, you know, cover what that NPC does. You know, maybe that NPC uh, likes to play cards or an instrument. Um, and just every night describe them going and doing that, like maybe set, like maybe they have, they find themselves a stump and they pull out cards and they lay them out 
you know, like they're playing solitaire or something. That's going to encourage the players to interact with that person. And if you do that on a nightly basis or, you know, a daily basis and cover what that character does each day, they're encouraged to interact with it. And it'll also get them to start thinking, oh, well, what do I do during that downtime? What do I do each day as we're literally walking for a, two weeks at a time? Um, that that might be a good way to introduce them to that. Same. Um, similarly, you could probably do that in town, too. Um, but again, it would have to be a case of where an NPC has joined them and they're going to see them every day. Um, so the random encounter NPC might, would work better on the road. Personal preference, um, you know, I, I've kind of, I've kind of grown partial to simulationism. There's a level of, there's a level of freedom there, um, in that you don't have to worry about tracking people back onto, you know, back onto the train tracks. Um, you can kind of just let them go about it. Again, you, you have to be able to, you know, improv characters, you know, come up with names on the fly, come up with personalities on the fly, come up with adventures on the fly. But, you know, that being said, it, it, it there's some real freedom there. And I, I like the attachment that some players get to their characters in the setting. You know, they might, I you know, I kept saying they get attachments to the characters, but setting is definitely an issue too. You can have players who deathly hate a certain place or just fall in love with a place where you know that when they stop adventuring that's probably where that character is going to go back to settle or yeah it, it's there, there's just a level of attachment that comes out of doing that when players are willing to uh, role play downtime uh, so I, i've grown partial to it i can i can run um pure adventure games or uh, pure adventure games, pure narrativist style games, and yeah, I like running in them just fine, but I, I like the level of freedom that comes for both the game master and, and the player as well. Um, but that being said, as I said, there's nothing wrong with running in either way. My recommendation for whether or not you should use downtime in your game is, well, preference. I mean, if you don't know uh, if your players or, uh, or you would like running it that way, um, you know, take my suggestion on how to give it a try, you know, uh, either give them some time in town or, you know, have them role play their, you know, their travel time. Uh, otherwise, you know, just do what's right for your game. There's not, there's, there's no, there's nothing wrong with running downtime or not running downtime. It's just another tool that you have much like minis. Um, but you know, maybe there's something, uh, to the discussion of narrativism, uh, simulationism and downtime that I didn't cover, or maybe you disagreed with something I had to say. Please feel free to leave a comment below if there's something that I missed or if you disagreed. Um, and please like, share, and subscribe so we can keep the conversation going. And as always, thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.